All right, good evening, everybody. This is Suzanne Shirley here. I am a senior Ruby ambassador with Plexus Worldwide. Tonight, we are starting this incredible book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. And I have the cover off of my book right now, so I'm just gonna hold it up here. What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Shad Helmstetter, PhD. You know what, I have this to say. People way before Shad Helmstetter are talking about thinking yourself to success. Who am I talking about? Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. This is an incredible book. I will tell you, it is like a textbook. Okay, if you're going to read Napoleon Hill, uh, you better love to read. I really don't. There are certain books that I actually can sit down and read, but I got this on audio. So I'm listening to this on audio and I. I love it. It's very rich. He is so insightful. Napoleon Hill was one of the greatest multimillionaires in the mid-century 1900s, so the 20th century. He talks about story after story after story of people who in the, the, the 20th century became independently wealthy from zero to wealth, zero to everything, okay? because they thought themselves there. They taught themselves how to think the right way. So that's why we're doing this. If you study Tony Robbins, and if you listen to him, Tony Robbins is one of the greatest self-help gurus of our time. And he teaches and trains on how to talk to yourself and create a reprogramming of the brain. This is not a new concept. This is not a new concept. I want to get that across, okay? So with that said, I'm gonna get rid of everybody else's pictures so that I'm not bugged by looking at faces. I hope everybody can see me and hear me. So chapter one, looking for a better way. I'm not gonna read directly, but I'm gonna read nuggets because I wanna talk about um, what we're, we're talking about brain reprogramming. So we've all heard that life is supposed to offer it's supposed to offer endless opportunities, the fulfillment of our dreams. And I don't have my glasses. I need my glasses. The fulfillment of our dreams. Sorry about that. And a chance to live each day in a way that brings happiness and success. So we all have experienced working really, really hard and getting to a point where we feel like we we're hitting a wall and we can't get past that wall. So have you ever wondered then why things do not work out the way that they should? Why do some people seem to be so lucky and while others, uh, the great majority of the rest of us seem to not be? Well, is it kismet kind of fate, which some mysterious uh, way charts our destiny and leaves us, um, leaves little of the steering the course through life up to us? Is that, that steering up to us? What's actually holding back? What's holding us back? We truly would like to do better, be the way that we really would like to be and have a happier and more successful day every day in the area of living. What is it? What is this big wall that stands in our way? What is it? What is this wall? Most people live in the area of shoulds, musts, and cannots. Shoulds, musts, and cannots. Okay? It's bad to have your head in the clouds. That's what most of us were told. We've got to have our feet planted firmly on the ground. Um, we have this nagging suspicion that there's more to all of this than what's meeting the eye. And Shad Helmstetter was saying that in this book right here in this chapter that he just couldn't see it at one point. What if you could find what's stopping you what if you could find out what's stopping you what's holding you back and turn it all around what if we could do that what if there is an answer and no one else has looked in the right place what if any of us at any time could reach up and touch the stars what if right so what did he do he started studying human behavior and then he, what he did is he went into motivational marketing. He started, he, he called it motivational marketing. And then he found himself walking down the hallways of academic psychology. 
and he started to realize that there's got to be a better way, a better way that's being overlooked. And he believed that mastering one's future surely must start with mastering oneself. He knew that, right? He found dozens of answers, but he found only one solution. You see, guys, there's lots of answers out there. Have we gone and looked down the shelves of the Barnes and Noble or an Amazon? There's tons of self-help books on every topic known to man, but there's only really one answer and it's to reprogram the brain. Okay, having spent more than 20 years studying most of the literature of success, he says, Shad Helmstetter says that he's found a consistent, unfulfilled promise the promise of our success waiting just around the corner. What are some of the answers? They can be uh, becoming a goal setter, a true achiever, thinking positively, being more creative, become centered. We've always heard those things, right? Those are some answers that are out there. Um, he says that he, that he recommends that we take with a grain of salt anybody's claim that they can give you the secret of success. Just take them with a grain of salt. There's many keys to success, but why are they not working? If there's so many keys to success, why aren't they working? Okay. If there's so many answers to the questions out there about what to do to make life better, then why have so many people failed at making these great ideas happen or work? They work for a period of time, but then they stop working. So you're hitting a wall. Well, people, it's like they're attending a pep rally or a meeting in which somebody gives them a rousing motivational speech. Have you ever seen that? You've been to a motivational speech and you feel like, man, this is really doing something for me. But, and you think about all these different things you can change and you're inspired and you're going to do something. But then you go home and it just doesn't happen for you. Okay. Well, it's because there's something that's being overlooked. It's not how the brain is, is working. That's not how the brain works. The brain doesn't work by going and hearing some motivational speech and being inspired and then all of a sudden breaking through the wall and achieving uh, massive dreams, okay? That's not how it works. You have to know how to treat the brain and then you have to treat it right. If you give your brain the wrong programming, it will take you in the wrong direction. But if you give your brain the right programming, then it's gonna take you in the right direction. Okay, what's an example of negative programming? You know, we've all grown up, and if you've been in an average, somewhat positive home life, you have at least heard the word no, or don't, or you can't do something more than 148,000 times when you're a kid. If you can imagine that number, that's a lot of no's and you can't and you won't do that. Okay. So some people have told Chad Helmstead or they've only been, they've only heard the word yes, or that they could accomplish their dreams maybe three or four times in their lives. They can really remember that occasion because it was so pivotal that somebody breathed life into them. Right. But those no's and those negative experiences far outweigh the yeses and the you can do it and I believe in you experiences. So leading behavioral researchers have told us that as much as 77% of everything we think is negative or counterproductive or works against us. And as much as 75% or more of our programming is just the wrong kind. So 75% or more of the programming of our brain is the wrong kind. The result is that without knowing what we were doing and with, uh, with us not recognizing the immense effect this casual programming was having on us, we've been programmed the wrong way, okay? And we've taken it to heart. We've taken it to heart. All that negativity, we've taken it to heart. So hundreds or even thousands of times are told or that we've told ourselves as a result what we could not do or could not accomplish. Repetition is a convincing argument. Repetition, you're hearing it over and over from other people, so you start telling it to yourself and you didn't even realize you're saying it to your subconscious. You begin to live out the picture of yourself that you've created in your mind. That's what you're doing. 
You don't even realize you're doing it. In doing so, you, this wall is created. And we stand, in this, it stands there invisibly, but very powerfully between us and our unlimited potential and our unlimited future for as long as our old programming exists in our brains. It's a force to be reckoned with. You can't get past that wall. So here's the great news. It does not have to be that way. The great news is that we can reprogram the brain. It's a biblical concept. As a man thinketh, so is he. That is a Bible scripture. And guess what? It's scientifically correct as well. Okay? Through scientific discovery, we've proved that the relationship between our own mental programming and the matter of where we will succeed or fail in any endeavor we undertake in life, that thing can be promoted by the brain, by the mind. It is virtually impossible for any of us to do anything, no matter how insignificant, without being affected by our conditioning. And most of our conditioning has happened from others. We've been conditioned by other people. Okay. So it's now up to us to recondition ourselves, to condition ourselves and get rid of the old conditioning and replace it with new conditioning. Okay. Basically your success of anything, whether you're going to be successful in anything is inexorably tied to the words to the words and the beliefs about yourself that you've stored in your subconscious. Okay. What's stored there for the most of us was decided by who? Somebody else. We have literally taken on the limiting beliefs of somebody else that they have for us. And we are carrying them around every single day. Consider this. I want you to consider this. Think for a moment what you might do differently tomorrow if you were somebody else. Somebody whose programming was completely different from yours. Okay? Attitudes, beliefs, feelings, all different. They would assure you of having an abundance of self-belief, enthusiasm, and achievement. Think about what you could do. What could the future hold for you? You need to ask yourself these questions. If you had just the right successful new mental program, would you be doing the same thing for a living that you're doing now? Would you be doing your job the exact same way that you're doing now? What about your personal life? Would you change anything? Would anything improve? Would you have reached more goals than you've reached so far in your life? Would you have more money in the bank or any more fin financial security than you have now? What about your day-to-day -day life? Would it be less frustrating, more rewarding? How would it be better? Would it, would it, what would the future hold for you today if all those things were better and different? Success ultimately is up to the individual. It's up to you. If it's, if it's to be, it's up to me. I'm quoting Helen McFadden. I'm sure she got it from someone else. If it's to be, it's up to me. Success is up to the individual. It's not the pen. It's the writer. It's not the road. It's the runner that counts. You will become what you think about the most. Your success or failure in anything large or small will depend on your own programming what you accept from others, and what you say when you talk to yourself. It makes no difference whether we believe it or not. The brain doesn't have to, you don't have to believe what you're saying. You can say things that are completely crazy that you don't even believe, but you tell your brain enough, that idea, and your brain is going to start to believe it. The, the brain will simply believe what you tell it the most. And what you tell it about you, it will create. It will create. It has no choice in the matter. It's scientifically proven. Okay? Religion affirms this ancient truth. 
It does. Whatever we think we become. Tens of thousands of devout believers who, through one religion or another, were professing the same truth, and to them it was inevitable. The scientific research would one day prove their claim that we control with our own minds most everything in our lives, including the health that we have, our careers, personal relationships, and our future. What if? What if you could actually learn how? to change or override your old programming and replace it with specific word for word. And I mean, word for word, new, pro new programming. What if you could do it in such a way that you could affect and improve your attitudes and your behavior fast, like fast, like tomorrow, start acting different tomorrow. Like right now, you're going to start saying stuff to yourself and improve your behaviors now. Okay not through years of difficult studying and training, but easily, simply, any time, any time you choose to do it. You start saying the right things to yourself and your behaviors are going to change immediately because your belief is going to change. You start talking to yourself the right way, your beliefs are going to change and your actions are going to follow. Your behaviors have no choice because they follow the brain. What works and what does not. Your programming controls your habits. So you change your programming, you're going to change your habits. Okay? Since old programming controls your habits, it's the old habits which once again take over. They take over. All these solutions to self-help. You can read a book and your old programming controls your habits. So you can read a self-help book and that wall is going to come up and prevent you from achieving success because that old programming is what controls your habits. Okay. So even though we were told that any of us could live really highly successful lives and given specific instructions on how to do it, very few of us have actually done it. So we live in that, that realm of can'ts cannots and shoulds and oughts. Very few of us have done it. Could it be that the misleading, the, sorry, the missing ingredient is somehow connected to our individual programming? So what does not work and why doesn't it work? The how-tos of success, the philosophies of success, being better managers, losing weight, overcoming depression, getting a better job, setting goals, living with others, managing your time, generally being more successful. All those things, the philosophies of success, sometimes never work. You can read a book about it. It doesn't work. Okay, you attend seminars. You buy the books. You listen to the cassettes. You attend company uh, training. Consult with leaders of the industry and then you come up with only one question. If there are so many good solutions, why aren't they creating permanent changes? Here's an example. Why do so many people read a book on something as worthwhile as Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale? You've all heard that book, Posit The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. So read that book. And then decide, decide to start thinking differently and end up six months later just thinking like they did before they read the book. Why? Okay. These are people that are sincere, caring individuals. Uh, you follow their advice. Most of it's going to help for a while. But nothing you read about is going to be permanent. You can read about the greatest concepts of self-improvement on any topic that you pick. Like thinking big, controlling your stress, thinking positively, chart your own co course, becoming, believing in yourself, create your own future, don't hate people, have courage, have tolerance, uh, be honest, working hard, um, have faith, manage your time, dress the right way, believe in a higher self, eat right, show up, meditate, motivate yourself. You read about all that stuff, okay? Take action. Don't give up. Believe in God. Be generous. All those things. 
and you can read about it and it makes you feel good for a little while, but guess what? How are you ever going to put any of that into action? It doesn't work because there's something that's missing. Okay. What's missing? What's the key? Here's what's missing. Permanence. The first thing missing is permanence. The second thing is missing is knowledge of the brain physiological process. Knowledge of the brain physiological process, how the brain actually works and functions. And the third thing that's missing is word for word new programming to the subconscious. What are the three things missing? Permanence, it's only temporary, it's not gonna last. Knowledge of the brain physiological, physiological process and word for word new programming for the brain to the subconscious. The only solution which includes all three missing ingredients is something we call self-talk. Self-talk, the only solution which includes permanence, knowledge of the brain process, and word for word programming, reprogramming of the subconscious is a thing called self-talk. You've got to reprogram your subconscious, your subconscious mind. You've got to give it continuous, 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 not today and maybe tomorrow and that's all, you don't need to do it anymore. No, continuous new instructions, word for word, new programming. So I'm gonna go quickly through chapter four, comparing the brain to a personal computer. Comparing the brain to a comp personal computer, there's three parts to a computer. A computer screen, which is our appearance and our actions, our appearance and our actions, our behaviors, okay? The keyboard is uh, input which is our five senses, what we hear, we see, we taste, we touch and smell, what we say to ourselves, what we actually say to ourselves is the keyboard as well. And then finally, the storage disk of the computer, which is our subconscious mind. Think about those three parts of the computer. Okay, the brain is like a control center. It has a wall of light switches. We gotta switch them on our emotions, our health, we plan, we hope, we dream, we speak, we look, we walk, we act, react, we respond, we have memories, judgments, attitudes, and fears, creativity, logic, spirit, all those switches in the brain. Those things are gonna get switched on when we say the right things to ourselves. We have neurotransmitters that govern which switches are turned on and turned off. These neurotransmitters in our brain, okay? and the brain automatically responds, this is the bottom line, the brain automatically responds to every one of our unconscious electrical, chemical, mental, and physical commands. Those that are principally concerned with keeping us alive. So thoughts, thoughts are the commands in the brain. Our thoughts are the commands in our brain. What do thoughts do? They turn parts of the brain on or off. Our thoughts turn on or off parts of the brain, those neurological switches that I was telling you about. For every thought that we think, every conscious or unconscious thought that we say to ourselves, even if it's unconsciously, we're saying it to ourselves, electrically and chemically affect the control of every emotion, feeling or motion, like physical motion, every action that we take every moment of every day, whatever thoughts you have programmed into yourself or have allowed other people to program into you are affecting or directing, controlling every single thing about you, everything about you. We learn to accept what others tell us. That's what we're doing. And we learn to eventually believe it. And that's the problem. And that's how we are made up as humans and how the brain works. So now finally chapter five, and how am I doing on time? Because I've got some other things I wanna talk about. I'm going good. Uh, chapter five, we learn to believe, um, we learn to believe whatever is told to us, okay, by others or ourselves. What adults tell us as children has an incredible important effect on us. It, for, it forms what we believe 
about most of what's going on around us and almost everything that we come to believe about ourselves. I wanted to do more than anything I could think of to play a musical instrument and be a member of the school band, says Shad Helmsetter. He wanted to do that. He wanted to be a part of the band. He wanted to play a musical instrument. The band director tells the class teacher that not only could Shad Helmsetter not play in a band, but that he had no musical ability. And that he would never be able to play a musical instrument. And that was programming that he heard. He was a 12 year old boy and he heard this and his heart was set on learning how to play. So he worked hard. He heard somebody else that had no abuse. Okay. 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 It worked. He says, I heard from somebody else that I had no musical ability. And then he believed it. He heard that from somebody else that he valued and trusted. And then he believed that, that self-limiting belief. So as an opposite type of an example, here's another example, a young man, his name was Michael. Uh, this is a positive example. At six years old, visited an elderly gentleman from door, uh, next door in afternoon chats and out of sight, but within hearing distance at the top of the stairs one evening, ready for bed, the neighbor stopped by and this little boy, six years old, overheard the man tell his mother that he was very creative and that he knew that he would grow up to do things that were creative. So today, decades later, this, this young man, Mike Vance, is the dean of Walt Disney University. He is the premier creativity trainer in the United States today. Imagine, just imagine this, what our eager and open young minds perceived and believed when we were children. Think about this. So many of us have had things told to us and we can't even remember the negative stuff. It's piled up so much un, un, unbeknownst to us and even people who meant well, people who loved us, who weren't trying to hurt us, but they were trying to be realistic with us. Get your feet planted solid on the ground. Just know who you are, know where you are, know what you can and can't do. Be realistic. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's really great to, to be realistic, but a lot of the times being unrealistic and having dreams, that's the stuff that makes us successful. And even though people who meant very well were trying to help us stay realistic, what they were doing is they were taking away our creativity, taking away our imagination, taking away our ability to believe in ourselves and to do what God had programmed already into us to achieve our dreams. As long as we allow others to program us in a way that fits their choosing, their choosing, we are without a doubt out of control, a captive to the whims of some unknown destiny, okay? Not quite recognizing what hangs in the balance is the fulfillment of our own futures. It's that it made all, no, it made little difference whether the pictures of ourselves which were created were true or not. So it didn't matter whether they were true or not. Our experiences, our acceptance of what we heard from others and what we told ourselves became the foundation for the mental programming which directs us today. At our best, we've been living with only a part, a very small part of our life's programming working for us. Imagine what you could do if you could override all that. Imagine what you could do. Imagine being able to achieve your life's dreams. I'm telling you the power to do it is up here and we've got to reprogram our brains and really give ourselves brand new thoughts. We've got to get rid of the old and I'm going to talk about that tonight, getting rid of the old and replacing it with a new self-directed mind. One that we program ourselves. We choose our thoughts. We choose what to think and we start to self-direct those thoughts. From this day on, if you choose, you can, uh, you can change to gain a whole lot and change everything in your life. 
Think about this. If you were to get on a, a plane and you knew ahead of time that the computer was programmed the wrong way, would you want to get on that plane? No, I would not want to get on that plane. That is exactly the kind of program that most of us have. We have faulty programming. We've got a bad program. We've got been trying to achieve our goals and work so hard when we are limited because our own onboard computer is pre-programmed to hold us back. That's why we can't reach past that wall. That's why when we get ready to jump out of our comfort zone and say something to somebody, there's a wall that comes up. And well, I probably shouldn't, I don't know if I should say that. I don't know what's she going to think about me. You've got to erase and replace. Erase and replace. That's what we've got to do. You've got to learn how to talk to yourself. We're going to talk about that and learn that in the subsequent chapters that are coming. None of us have to continue struggling throughout this life with our old negative programming dragging us down or holding us back. If we can just learn to give specific, productive, new directions to our minds, then we have a chance to make things work and then keep on working and really reach the stars. Any of us can do this, guys. Once we recognize the real wall, you recognize that real wall, you can get past it. So what I want to talk about is this. What is this all about? What are we doing? What is this really all about? And I want you to think about this. If some of you are taking notes, I want you to think about this. Do you have your pen or pencil? Okay, because now I'm not talking about the book. I'm just going to give you a second if you don't have your pen and pencil. What's this all about? Why are we doing this? People go outward to try to get a new idea. The next conference, the next new thing, they get excited. The best way to become, when the best way to become successful is really not to go outside of yourself, but to go inside and start peeling out, peeling off the layers of the onion and find out what's really holding you back. What is really holding you back? Find it out and then start pushing through that hump and getting past it. That's what this is all about that we're doing. This is not going to be easy for some of you. It's not going to be easy. You want to get to emerald? You want to get to sapphire or diamond? Some of you have told me that's what you want to do. It's not going to be easy. It's not about what you know. It's about what you do with what you know. It's about what you do with what you know. It's not about knowledge. It's about action, doing what you, doing something with what you know. It's not about going from event to event and then waiting until you get the right person that you've added to your team uh, that's going to take you up to the stars in your business. Becoming an incredible leader takes lots of layers of doing. Lots of layers of doing. A leader who acquires personal growth then transfers it to their team. I just tonight made a video about chapter one about this book, Get Over Your Damn Self, because I was so compelled to make a video about it. What are you doing to grow yourself? What are you doing to grow yourself so that you can share it with your team? Leaders are growing themselves and then sharing it with their team. You acquire personal growth and then you give it, okay? It requires transparency, vulnerability, being yourself, admitting when you make mistakes, admitting when you're wrong, and being real. You've got to be real with your team. So many of us think that leadership is something that's way out there. So I've got to find it. It's out there. It's outside of me. That we try to become that person that's out there. But really, leadership is what is it? 
according to John Maxwell, it's one word. It's influence. Leadership is influence. The only way that you can gain influence is to make yourself a better leader. Remember the laws of leadership. There's like zero to nine, okay? And if you're a level four on the scale of zero to nine, who are you going to attract? You're going to attack, attract threes and twos. You're going to have influence over threes and twos and ones. If you build your leadership up to level seven, now you're going to attract level sixes and fives and fours, okay? You're going to start recruiting those types of people. If you can build yourself up to a level nine, then you're going to start attracting eights and sevens. Maybe even if you can get to a 10, you're going to really be pulling in some big hitters, some influential people. You're going to attract more influential people. It's influence. Leadership is influence, guys. And you can't go outside of yourself to gain that influence. You got to go within. You got to start peeling out the layers. That's why we're doing this. I want to give you the why. On our team pages, are we sharing positive graphics and videos with other people? Uh, you guys are all leaders. You have team pages. Okay. Everybody that's on here tonight, unless you don't have a team yet, if you have one person, you're a team leader. If you have got more than one person, you're still a team leader. Some of you have team pages. What are you putting out there? Positive graphics and videos of other people, other people's ideas, or are you casting a vision of yourself? What is your vision? What do you have to share with your team? What is the thing that you believe? What is the direction you want to take your team that you're sharing with them? Or are you just posting, hey, such and such shared this, I'm going to share it with you. Such and such shared this, I'm going to share it with you. Hey, such and such over here on this team page said this, I'm going to share it with you. No, what do you have to say to your team? That's what I want to ask you. Are we transferring our beliefs and vision to our team so that they can buy in to their own dreams and the vision for their own lives? See, leadership is not sharing what other people think and believe. It's sharing what you believe. What is your vision? And if you don't have a vision for where you want to take your team, you need to stop and ask yourself that question. What is your vision for your team? For every person that says it cannot be done, there's always somebody else out there that's doing it. Trust me, okay? You cannot give one reason why you can't end up on the beach in Maui or Kona or wherever Plexus takes us in September. And I'm preaching to self. You cannot give one reason, and I mean not one reason, why you can't be on that beach. I'm hitting some home right now. I'm hitting some heavy hitters right now. I'm just talking real clear with you. We need to become masters of connecting with people. The best training, I mean masters of connecting with people. The best training that we have with our teams is when we are raw and real and honest with our people. Are you posting videos of yourself? Are you sharing your heart with your team? Have you never posted a video of yourself? Have you noticed that that's all I do once a week as I get on there and I share my heart with my team? You need to duplicate me. Start making videos and leading your team. It doesn't have to be more than four minutes if that's all you can do. It can be a four minute video. Talk about something that you believe in and that you're passionate about and share that with your team. You've got to start connecting with your team. So a question that I wanna ask you, that you need to ask yourself, do you have a vision for yourself and for your team? If not, how can you become an effective leader with a vision, without a vision, without a vision? How can you become an effective leader if you don't have a vision? You need to come up with your own vision. What is it you wanna do with your team? Where do you wanna take them? It's in the Bible, guys. Biblically, this is a biblical concept. People that have no vision, they perish. People that have vision take people places. Think about Moses, right? They never got to the promised land, but eventually 
there were some descendants that took him to the promised land, but Moses had a vision. Joseph had a vision. All the successful people that, were, that went places and took people places, they had a vision. Think about the John Maxwell principle. I've heard him say this a lot. You know, he'll talk about, okay, say that I drive a white car. What do you see? Do you see the words W-H-I-T-E-C-A-R or do you actually see a white car? No, you see a white car. You literally, the very first thing in your brain is that white car. You visualize it. So your actions are going to follow your thoughts. You have to visualize that beach. You've got to visualize the stage. You've got to visualize the back office with 1,500 points. You have to visualize that emerald pool bonus. You have to visualize the leather seats in the Lexus. You have to visualize it. And if you can't do that, you are not gonna be able to produce it. Your thoughts produce actions. Stop looking outward, start looking inward for the answers as to why you feel stuck anywhere you are. Start looking inward for the answers instead of looking for the next event, the next thing that's gonna excite you. And ask yourself, do you believe that if somebody wants something bad enough that they can actually do it? Ask yourself that, do you actually believe that? That if somebody wants this something bad enough, they can actually do it? And if you say yes to that question, then guess what, you can too. You can too. Leadership is caught. It's caught. It's not taught. You want your team to catch a vision? Then you need to cast it. Cast it out there and they will catch it. They will catch it. You're not going to teach them a vision. Okay. Okay. Back down to the homework assignment. There's actually an assignment I want you to do. And it's basically self-discovery. That's all it is. It's not going out and doing something big. Okay. We're already in the 90 day challenge. We are doing reaching out to a minimum of three people. We're following up on Fridays. We are listening to a video, a motivational video, an instructional video every day. We are saying our daily affirmations. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an assignment because I want you to start thinking about peeling back some layers. And if you are in the 90-day challenge, you will be able to self-discover and you'll be able to write your answers there. If you don't feel comfortable enough to do that, this is on you. I'm not going to make you do it. Okay? If you're not in the 90-day challenge, and you are personally sponsored by me, you're welcome to write the answers out and send them to me. If you're not in the 90 day challenge and you're not personally sponsored by me, you're still welcome to send them to me and I will read them and I'll have a dialogue with you if that's what you want to do. This is, if you're in the 90 day challenge, you need to do this, okay? This is gonna be required. You're gonna to have to start digging deep. Okay. If you're not in the 90 day challenge, this is not required. It's up to you. But I'm just telling you, if you want to move in the right direction, you've got to start doing some self-discovery. Okay. So I'm going to post these questions so you don't have to sit here and write them down. I'm going to post these questions in the group. You need to be vulnerable. You need to be vulnerable. You need to really go there. Okay. Ask yourself these three questions and answer them. Number one, Again, I will write them out so you don't have to write them down right now. When you decide to be bold and step out of your comfort zone and you feel held back, you just get that feeling of hold, I'm held back. What is that negative self-talk and where does it come from? What is it and where does it come from? Is it a childhood memory? Is it somebody that told you, maybe a teacher, a parent, a relative, a next door neighbor, a babysitter? What was it? Who was it that said whatever it was to you to make you think something negative about yourself? And what is, what is that negative self-talk and where did it come from? Number two, if you knew, if you knew that you could give that limited belief 
that we just talked about back to the person like on a platter who gave it, who loaned it to you. Okay. After all these years and break free and have anything that you wanted out of your life or your business, would you do whatever it took to make this happen? If you could take that limited belief and give it back to the person who loaned it to you after all these years and break free, right? And have anything you wanted out of your life, would, or your business, would you be able to be willing to do whatever it took to make it happen? And number three, as you do, this is the third question and the last one, as you do your affirmations this week, as we go through the process of how and what to do, I want you to visualize yourself. I want you to visualize yourself. Literally giving those borrowed beliefs back to these people. Okay, give them back to the owner and literally trading them, trading, because remember we have to reprogram. We're gonna trade them for the ones that we want. And that's the reprogramming, okay? You need to be open to this process. If you're trying so hard and you're working really hard and not getting anywhere with this, this is just, you've just got to just do what I tell you to do and it's going to work. We are going to peel back some onion layers, okay? Les Brown says, we all have an energy about us. We all do. It's either positive or it's negative. The negative is based on fear. The positive is based on faith. So we're gonna start to reprogram our brain and operate out of faith. And when you do, you're gonna have people that attract, they're being attracted to you. That's the law of attraction. You're gonna stop operating out of fear and you're gonna stop, start operating out of faith and you're gonna be blown away at the people that are attracted to you, okay? You're also gonna do your daily IPA that we're doing in the challenge. You're gonna do all of that, okay? These are just questions that you need to answer, okay guys? I want you to answer them sometime this week. Um, in, this, in the 90 day challenge group, I will post those and you're gonna comment under there. Some of you are gonna get really raw. You're gonna talk about some things that maybe some of us don't know about you. This is a place where it's safe to speak your mind. Uh, no one's gonna judge you. No one's going to say or do or, or be any way that's negative towards you. We're all gonna love you. Um, remember that none of us have counseling degrees. So if you talk about some things that are really, really tough that happened to you in your past and you just want to talk about it, feel free to do that. I'm just letting you know right now that uh, this is a place where you can get real, okay? And for all of you out there in Plexus land or if, any, if you're in another network marketing company and you joined us this evening, we're so happy that you joined us. We're going to turn off the recording and start our discussion. Good night and uh, my best wishes to you on this journey.